Hello, I'm Abigail Flowers, and in this video, I'll show you how to play one of my very favorite songs, L-O-V-E, in the key of D. This song is by Burt Kampfert and Milt Gabler, and was made famous by one of the greatest, Nat King Cole. Here's a bit of what we're working toward. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. First, let's look at the chords we'll be using. We've got a lot of kinds of D chords, E chords, and A chords. So we start off with just a regular old D chord. And later on, we'll have a D major seven. We'll have a D seven, which is sometimes called D dominant seven. And we'll even have a D six. We'll play an E minor, an E7, as well as an E9. So it's just one note different from that E7, but it has a really distinct and rich sound. We'll play an A7 a lot of times, as well as a G major 7. G sharp diminished seven. I always say, no matter how long the chord name is, we've only got four strings, so four notes max. So don't get overwhelmed by a long chord name. This one's just two fingers. And that one has one of my favorite sounds. I definitely recommend memorizing as many chords as you can. So if you don't have any of these chords memorized, I would try for memorizing D, E minor, and A7. If you've been playing for a while and you already have those ones memorized, I would try to pick two or three other chords that you don't already have memorized. Maybe it's a D6, maybe it's G sharp diminished seven, but I would go ahead and choose two or three chords to add to your memory bank here. The strum pattern I'm using is more or less one, two, and three, four. Down, down, up, down, down. The important thing here is emphasizing beats two and four, which is very common in genres like jazz and gospel. So that means we're gonna try to play beats two and four just a little bit louder than the others. We're gonna emphasize those. So beats one and three, sometimes I'm not even like ringing the chord out it's almost more of a percussive placeholder. So I'll do it on a D chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So sometimes on beats one and three, I'm just kind of brushing one or two of the strings and it keeps time for me, but I'm really focusing on the chords ringing out with emphasis on beats two and four. That said, I'm not perfectly consistent with um, the mechanics of a strum pattern. I focus more on the feel and does it feel natural? Can I strum consistently? But that's the strum pattern I'm going for. And I encourage you to simplify if you need to or take creative liberties if you feel really comfortable. If all of these chords are new to you, I would go for something super simple like one strum per chord or one strum per beat. So you could go, L is for the way you look at me. If you feel super comfortable, maybe you work on plucking a more complicated strum pattern, like L is for the way you look at me. So now let's play through the song with chord diagrams on the screen. A one, two, a one, two, three. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extra. Love is more than just
just a game for two. Two in love can make it take my heart, but please don't break it. Love was made for me and you. A few notes on fingering. So when you're changing from one chord to the next, it's good to think about, are any of my fingers already on the right fret or on the correct string? So when we go from E minor to A7, for example, if you play your E minor with your pointer finger, then all you have to do to get to A7 is add your middle finger on the second fret of the B string. So when I switch from D major seven to D6, I go ahead and move it so that my middle finger is on the second fret of the G string and my ring finger is on the second fret of the E string. That's because when I go to a D7, all I have to do is put my pointer finger down on the first fret of the B string and then I have my D7. So I go D major seven, D6, so my ring finger gets to stay in the same place for all of these and then add my pointer for D7. When you go to G major seven, you just lift your middle and pointer fingers. Your ring finger is already in the right spot. One detail I like to throw in sometimes is a stop on the A7 chord on the lyric, anyone that you adore. So here's what that might sound like. E is even Door can love. So your strum comes back in on love. So you could leave the stop for the whole two measures or you do the stop and then you add uh, a couple strums right before the D chord. So here's what that would sound like. E is even more than anyone that you adore can love. That's another example of play whatever feels natural to you. What feels natural to me is the stop on A7. So all I do is play the chord and then mute it, um, kind of with a combination of my right and left hands, um, but you can do it either way. You're just gonna stop the strings from vibrating. And that's the whole song. I hope you enjoyed. And if you feel like it, you can check out my lullaby version of L-O-V-E on Spotify. I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'll see you next time.